ba 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 da ba Chicken Tales! Hello, and welcome to Chicken Tales. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. My name is Sarah, and this is episode six. Today, we have a story about volcanic teamwork and a diary written by a squirrel. Also, a joke of the day and a silly activity to do with your family. So cozy on up with some pillows, blankets, and a stuffy or two, and listen to some chicken tales. Our first story is called The Volcano and The Other Volcano, and it's by William. Once upon a time, there was a volcano named Billy. He was a volcano that used his heat to power geysers to make them blow hot water. People use the geysers to heat their swimming pools and heat their water. He lived on the island of Hawaii. Billy liked living there because it was warm and the seagulls always flew around him. He had a seagull friend named Bob who he talked to every day. One day, a rock giant was playing soccer with a friend and accidentally kicked an enormous rock onto his blower cone where it got wedged and Billy could not get it out. He was stuck. He tried everything he could think of, but that rock would not move. And all the geysers went cold because he couldn't power them. Thinking quickly, his seagull friend Bob flew to the island next to him and explained his situation to Joe, a neighboring volcano. Joe splashed some lava on the giant rock, and it split in half and then melted into Billy's own lava. Then he blew a mighty blast of lava and was able to power the geysers again. And everybody had pie. The end. Wow, William, thank you so much for this story. Volcanoes are fascinating. I want to know more about the rock giants, though. How big were they? Do they play sports other than soccer? Could you play tennis with giant rocks? Or giant rock basketball? I couldn't find any answers about rock giant sports, but I did find out some things about volcanoes. Did you know that the largest volcano in our solar system is actually on Mars? It's called Olympus Mons, and it's 373 miles wide and 13 miles tall. But the most volcanic activity, that means volcanoes that erupt a lot, is on one of Jupiter's moons named Io. It's covered in volcanoes, and as a result, the surface is always changing its shape. I also learned that animals can use volcanoes. The Maleo birds bury their eggs in the sand or soil near volcanoes to keep them warm. They live on one of the islands in Indonesia. And now it's time for joke of the day. Knock, knock. Who's there? Doris. Doris who? Doris locked. That's why I'm knocking. <laughs> Our second story today is about a squirrel named Cynthia. Some of you already know about her and her yellow raincoat. If you don't, this is the story of how it all came to be. Once upon a time, a squirrel named Cynthia lived in a lovely wooden house between a forest and a playground. Every day she played in the woods, splashing in the creek and climbing lots of interesting trees with her sisters and brothers. One day, things changed. Strange, huge creatures with brightly colored fur came to her lovely wooden house and played on the playground. What was happening? She decided to be a detective and find out. She kept a record of her investigations, so here it is. Day 1. Surveillance Huge, loud creatures are running around on the playground. What I thought was fur seems to be an outer covering over their bodies. They have four legs, but they only walk on two of them. Note to self, ask parents about this strange habit. When they came this morning, they went right into the wooden house, my wooden house. After some time in the wooden house, they came back to the playground. I thought no one was allowed to play here. They're running and playing on a strange flying structure that makes them go high up in the air and then back down again and some of them appear to be making food out of mud. Are they going to eat mud? Odd. Don't they know about acorns? Maybe I should tell them. Day two, surveillance. They are back. Once again, they went into the wooden house, 
made some noise, and came out on the playground. They are wearing different outer coverings today. Today they also seem to be running in groups. Are they hunting? They don't seem to be finding anything. Note to self, what is a Batman? I know what a bat is. Some bats came to my brother's birthday party once, but a Batman? I don't know that creature. I also noticed that the huge creatures came with even bigger creatures. Are they giants? I'm going to ask Mom. Day 3, Surveillance. The huge creatures, which Mom told me are called humans, and come in small sizes and big sizes. She said the smaller version are called children, and the giants are actually called grown-ups. Apparently, the grown-ups act like parents and take care of the smaller humans. Just like us. Weird. Anyway, these humans disappeared for two days and are back again today. They seem even more bouncier than usual. I peeked in through the glass peephole on my wooden house, and I saw them inside. They were all spread out in their nest and looked very busy. That nosy cardinal swooped by to see what I was doing, and I almost fell down, so my mom made me come back into our nest. Later, I snuck out again and saw them eating. But this was different. None of it looked like acorns. Their food came in all different colors. Day 4, Surveillance It's raining today, so I think the children humans will stay inside. My sisters and brothers never like to go out in the rain, but I love it. My favorite days are rainy days. I could run down the wet trees and go swimming in puddles. The only problem is, is that my fur gets all wet and then I get cold. I hear a lot of noise. I think the children humans are going to come out. Good, I can watch them. There's a big puddle on their playground. I wonder if they'll swim in it. Wait, what are those? I can't see the human children. They are covered from head to toe in brightly covered, um, leaves? New skin? Did they molt like a snake? They aren't getting wet. Why is that? They are splashing in puddles and no one looks cold. I'm going to ask Mom. Update later that day. Mom says they are wearing something called a coat rain. Wait, no, 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 a raincoat. No, no, I think she said coat rain. It protects them from the wet. I want one. I want a coat rain. I wonder if they would give me one. That's all Cynthia's story for today. I have more entries from her detective notebook that I'll read another day. Next up. The Silly Activity of the Day. Today, for your silly activity, I want you to make a silent parade with your family. Line everyone up. Each one of you choose an imaginary instrument. Someone can play an invisible trombone, someone else can make a drum, or somebody can play a pretend flute. Or you can try to play all of these at once by yourself. In your line, I'll play your imaginary instruments at once and march throughout your house. Don't forget to wave to the imaginary people in the crowd. After you do it once silently, try to make all the sounds on the next go-round. Enjoy your parade! That's it for today. Thank you for listening to Chicken Tales. Remember, if you are drawing sidewalk chalk with a chicken, ask them to tell you a story. But if they won't, you can write one yourself and send it in to us at chickentailspod at gmail.com. Bye-bye. Ba-ba-ba-da-ba, chicken tails!